Welcome back, everybody. My name is Hao Vu, and this is the Hao Vu Moto Vlog, episode three of my beginner's thoughts, kind of sharing my motorcycle journey on my 2020 Honda CBR 500R. Here is another walkthrough, a little bit of eye candy for everybody, myself included. I, I don't look at the bike enough and appreciate the aesthetic of it, so this is a great chance for me to do that as well. I just have a huge grin when I look at this bike. It looks like a murder hornet, if you guys have heard the news about those things. Took off the decal, so it's all black. You could say a murdered out murder hornet. Not quite murdered out, but almost there. Just a real nice fit and finish on the bike. Here you can see the tan lines, as I like to call them, from when I removed the tank stripes that were clear coated over, so they leave this kind of recessed mark of just unfinished paint. So if you remove the tank decals, know that you're going to have to deal with that, probably professionally, unless you're really good at paint correction and sanding and all that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It doesn't look too bad for me, and I'm really just not looking at the tank when I'm, when I'm riding. I might change out the exhaust because this one's kind of boring looking, but I'm really not a big fan of the sound of most aftermarket exhausts. It's just not my style. I just rather have the sound of a stock exhaust with the look of a aftermarket exhaust. So here she is in all her glory, very beautiful. This is my helmet from a company called Rurock based in, um, I think, Gloucester, if I'm pronouncing that right, which I'm definitely not, but based in the UK, great company, sick looking helmet. I wanted to talk about the highway performance of this motorcycle. And to really keep it short and sweet, the highway performance is absolutely fine. It's everything you need for street riding, okay? And I think, you know, this, this bike for me as an all-around everyday motorcycle is just perfect. I do plan to commute with this thing every day that I possibly can. And I live in California, and in Northern California, I mean, I can bundle up in the winter, but other than that, I mean, there's not that many days that I will strictly not be able to ride on this thing. And with that being said, it's just economical. It has the killer good looks, great price point, Honda reliability and build quality and it can handle its own on the highway. My only other experience on a motorcycle is on a Honda 300, which is actually 286 cc's, and it just wasn't, it wasn't powerful enough to, to keep me safe on the highway, in my opinion. And this one, I'm cruising on the highway, 72 to probably 80 miles per hour is how I'm comfortable just cruising on the highway. And at those speeds, it feels great. There's no vibrations, you know, it doesn't feel wobbly or anything. It feels planted on the highway. And at those, in that 72 to 80 miles per hour, roughly 6,000 RPM, if you roll on the throttle, you can easily get yourself out of a situation and just fly past anything that you need to fly past, right? So that's why I said just like this is a very good practical everyday motorcycle that can do everything you need it to do. It's plenty fast. It's plenty quick, okay? The only time you're going to get into a position of thinking that it's not quick enough or not fast enough is when you're comparing it to a super sport or 650 class motorcycle which is obviously going to be fast and uh, some would argue that 600 650 class bikes are are too much power for the street you know i i've heard many people many experienced riders tell me that you know you'll never really use those bikes to their true potential on the street right no one's gunning it down the highway at 115 miles per hour Okay, no one who wants to be safe and keep their license or their life for that matter, right? So I think um, this is a perfect bike, perfect room to grow. And I think a lot of people get stuck in that trap of thinking that they need an upgraded bike just because they feel comfortable riding the bike around town, right? And what I'll say to that is if you take your motorcycle up to these streets or on a highway like this, these twisty roads where it's a steep uh, grade going down, a 15 mile per hour turn, that will humble you very quickly, right? When I'm riding through downtown, when I'm riding, when I'm commuting through the city, I already feel pretty comfortable on the bike, right? I'm already kind of singing and, you know, thinking about other things and just kind of like moving back and forth without a care in the world. But when I go to these twisty roads, man, oh man, I'm just like a little baby girl and I'm scared to go, especially going down the hill. Because going up the hill, you can just let go of the gas. You don't really have to trail brake as much because you know your, your engine braking and the fact that you're going uphill will slow the bike enough so that you can just take the turn at a comfortable speed but when you're going downhill it's very intimidating for me and it just it humbles me very very quickly and so 
to that, I say, you know, if, if you're thinking, oh, man, I need a faster bike already. I'm already outgrowing that. I think just take it to a very twisty road and see how confident you feel, right? You see if cars behind you are on your ass because you're not taking the turns fast enough. And I think that is going to be a really good test of whether you are truly ready to move up to a faster bike, especially going downhill, a steep downhill with, with these hairpin turns. I mean, it, it will really, really let you know whether you kind of deserve that upgrade, so to speak. You know what I mean? So that's basically all I wanted to say. Don't worry about it for the highway. I don't even want to make a long, drawn-out video about whether it can go on the highway or not because it absolutely can. It's absolutely a great bike. Um, so far, I'm loving it a thousand miles in. We'll see how this changes, but um, uh, my opinion right now is that it's a practical bike and it's going to work for me for what I'm going to need it for. And um, you know, like I said, this is the first year of my riding journey, so I'll be sure to share my experiences with you guys. And as I grow as a rider, I will be sure to document pretty much every part of that process. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I'll see you next time.